Ronnie Dale, four wheeling in westernaustralia.com and welcome to my third video vlog of 2017. Now in this particular vlog, I'm going to show you my latest mods to the Land Cruiser. Uh, a lot of you people have been asking for you know, stage six. When is stage six coming? I haven't done enough to warrant a full video for a stage six, so I'm going to include it in this vlog. So you're gonna get something out of this video. One of the other purposes to this vlog is we are heading to the Kimberley right as you watch this, as it's released, on our way to Broome. It's gonna take us two days to get to Broome. And then we're going to check out the Cape Levique area. Oh, also the uh, croc farm, Malcolm Douglas's croc farm. We're going to check that out. I got confirmed just two days ago that we got some backstage access to the crocodile farm. Uh, so that's going to be really cool. And there might even be a feature just on salt crocodiles if I feel I get enough footage and enough cool facts. Part of the reason why we're going to go to the croc farm is because we're going to be around crocodile infested areas because we're going to do the Munja track all the way to Walcott Inlet. That's going to be really cool. We are towing a boat. It is two weeks prior to our Kimberley trip and I'm at PDP getting the vehicle a bit of a service and a bit of a final checkup. The reason why I choose to do it two weeks before rather than a week before is so if there is any major issue, it can be sorted out beforehand. Parts can be ordered and whatnot. So what we've done is we've checked all the wheel bearings, checked from contaminants from the previous two trips, we've checked all the oils, we've dumped the oils, changed oils, changed filters, basically done everything just on a uh, fluid level of service. Also done all the grease nipples and all the grease points and whatnot on the vehicle and I've even changed the rear tyres over. So my two spares which haven't been put into rotation yet are now on the back ready to go. Also I'm happy to report that with all my civil hubs uh, and hubs in general and bearings none of those have been contaminated this time which is really good so we've uh, found some upgraded seals and using the right grease to keep all the contaminants out so I'm really happy with that. Uh, nothing in the diffs either. So apart from that the only bit that's concerning on the vehicle Slight concern is we've detected a oil leak, diff oil leak, from the front diff pumpkin. Now we've tightened all the seal bolts around it and we can't see a crack anywhere. So I'll just have to keep an eye on that in the next couple of days leading up to our trip before we go. Just to make sure it's not something major and hopefully tightening the bolts has fixed it. Oh and as you might see there's a, something new again. Now, before, before we actually head up north, this will be gone. And uh, you have to stay tuned to see what's gonna happen to this. Everyone keeps asking me, where is Brian? And where's his Jeep? What's happening to his Jeep? He is coming on this trip. And uh, right now, it's 10 to four on a Friday. He's set to go down and pick up his Jeep at 4 p.m. today. So in 10 minutes time, He's supposed to be there and pick it up. Now, it won't have the new motor. It won't have the new 4.1. It had a catastrophic failure to it, something to do with parts in it that weren't quite right. So they've rushed and pulled the engine out. And then just this morning, they put a secondhand 100,000 kilometer motor in it. And he's taking that to the Kimberley. Yes, it's not ideal. I do not recommend anyone to do that. But the fact that he's missed all his previous trips due to the Jeep not being ready and other things like work commitments and stuff, we're willing to take the risk and, and bring him with us. He's got to make it on this trip. So him and John are going to be in the Jeep. Hopefully it makes it the whole way. And we're going for 21 days. What does that mean to the regular uploads? Well, they are still going to happen. I've pre-scheduled uh, uploads for every single Sunday and every second Friday. And I may even throw a bonus Friday in there just for you guys. Now, I won't be as active on the commenting, obviously, because I'll be in and out of reception, mostly out rather than in, but I'll do my best and check in with your questions and comments. So coming up during while I'm away, I've done a specific video on spare parts and fluids, what to bring, what we bring, what I recommend you should bring, and I'll even speak to a mechanic about it. A lot of people have asked for this video. 
And another highly anticipated video that people have been asking for is electrics. One coming up with general advice for those who are going to do it themselves or not. And also uh, for those that want to know the how-tos, how to solder properly, the difference between a cold solder and a hot solder. And also while I'm away, there'll be an event up, a comp competition event that we went to and had uh, exclusive access to film. Pretty cool video, I think you'll enjoy it. it. Ended up being 30 minutes long because I interviewed some drivers. So look, there's plenty of content coming up. So enjoy that while I'm away. But now I won't hold you up anymore and we'll go through the mods on the Land Cruiser. All right, so about to show you the new mods to the Land Cruiser, but before that, you guys asked me a lot about what camera gear I use. Well, right now I'm testing out the new GoPro 5 because I just recently killed a GoPro 4. Uh, and that's the second one that's died in, well, in the last couple of months anyway. One went in mud and the other one got crushed. So this is a GoPro 5. Uh, it comes in a sealed case and this is the first time I'm actually recording on it. And I've got this new G5 stick here. It's like a gimbal. And that camera there is a Sony FS5. Um, does 4K, etc. I'm actually filming this on 4K at the moment. All right. So onto the mods now. So over here. Now I'm going to start inside the vehicle because I've, I found something really cool and I really want to show it with you guys. So I'm testing out this new matting right here. And this comes in a three meter roll. I think it's called car matting. Um, three meters did the whole car. So I've got, this is a passenger side obviously. And this is the driver side. And then on the back seat, I've got it from end to end. So I've sort of cut it to suit. And I've had to cut it around here, you know, it's not the neatest job, but um, it's better than what I had before. But here we are. So basically, <clears throat> there's a draw system under here, which you'll see in a minute. I've designed it so I can fit all my 10 litre water jerrys, just like that, they just slot in like that. And I've got a brand new steel bucket. Now onto my third bucket. Brother-in-law got me this seamless steel bucket. They're actually hard to find. Which I've bent so it fits in there. So that's nice and snug. Nothing's going to go anywhere. So basically on top here, this is where I'm going to strap my swag uh, or tents, um, extra food boxes, you know, stuff like that. It's all going to go up here. Strap down on, on these... Um, straps here. Now these are good for 300 kilos on a um, on a diagonal pull which is more than enough and it's anti-slip and I'll put it here as well and a little strip down the side there and here I've got that um, stuff you use for your tailgate stuck all this all the way along here and here as well and as an afterthought I forgot that the, the drop side actually has like a bit of a groove here but yeah it shuts and it should be should be dust tight, we'll see. I have mounted my compressor up here now. Uh, it's on a bracket which is gonna have a canvas bag going over the top of it. Now, my mate Nathan from PM Canvas doesn't notice yet, but I will be uh, hitting him up for a bag around there, see if he can do something there for me. So speaking of um, the same bloke, PM Canvas, he knocked up these bags for me here, it's halfway across, so it's about 600 millimeters deep. Looks like about 800 wide, and this holds my first aid kit and some toilet paper at the moment, but I'll load it up with um, all lightweight goods. So towels, you know, anything light goes up the top, Any, anything heavy goes as far um, down as possible with the lower center of gravity is what you sort of aim for when you pack a vehicle. This bag here goes the full length, one side to the other. And that'll have my fishing rods, uh, sand flag, and other gear that I can fit in there. So now on the other side, and as you can see up here, there's that bag that comes from the other, well, it's the full length from the other side, and um, the third bag, which is the longest bag of all. The other bag stops short because of the spare tire. Here it can go the whole way. Uh, C, CNS, CNS canopy, sorry. Uh, the guys who did the box on the other side, and they've done this box here for me here. Now, I'd just like to uh, let you know that uh, Joe, the guy who designed all this for me, hang on, can you actually see that? <coughs> uh, 
Now I just want to point out that the guy who helped me design this, now this is my design, uh, Joe from Santa's Canopies did warn me because I wanted the full, um, as much space as I could and I wanted to keep it below this, below the drop side, they weren't going to be quite sealed and I told them that I had an idea to keep it sealed and that's what I've done here. So with the Clark rubber and that's where I got the um, floor mats from, that was actually something I just saw there so I thought gee that's a pretty cool idea for the floor mats um, but I've got this anti-slip cargo mat for the top here and it's quite thick so it matches almost with the height of this so that's my reason for that. Now to save myself from writing in the comments below answering your questions this stuff is actually called ultimate matting and it's like your heavy duty sort of ute liner kind of stuff. Now it's really easy to cut and you can cut to any size and throw it in. But I think you have to buy it in 1.8 meters by a meter. I think it's the minimum you can get. So inside this drawer is all my cast iron cooking ware. So under here I've got my um, jaffle iron, coffee percolator. Uh, now I just, just want to drop a name for, for Drifter. They've sent me a lot of um, cast iron and, and, and fire sort of cooking stuff uh, recently which I've been trying on, on the Pilbara and the Golf Hill Strip, but in particular on this trip, I'm gonna try the uh, Snow Pea Cast Iron Camp Oven. On the Kimberley trip, I'm cooking all my food on the fire only. So that's gonna be really cool. It's got like a pan inside it, really cool design. So I can't wait to do that. I'm also gonna be showing you um, how to cook bread and stuff like that in my cooking videos. So anyway, this is all my cast iron cooking stuff and a bit extra stuff I can fit. But look, I'm still figuring out how to pack all this stuff because the drawer is like days old. This drawer here, this is my tool drawer, not fully packed out yet. Now it's got a recess down the back here, so I've put all the stuff that I'm probably not gonna need in a hurry. My tire repair kit's at the top because someone always punctures a tire. But here's the cool part. It's a drawer in a drawer. All my tools, spanner kits, stuff like that, knife, just stuff that I can get to really quick because we always end up with some issue on the tracks so we've got to tighten something up or or whatnot uh, plus with all the uh, tag along tours that i do during the year um, there's usually something that goes wrong with someone's car and when you've got 10 vehicles waiting for you you've got to be out there you got to be quick you got to be fast with your tools get the job done so you can keep the whole convoy moving so that's the uh, draw system here And that's about it. I mounted the uh, bottle jack here. I've wedged it up against there. Uh, I'm still figuring out where to put everything. And this trip into Kimberley is really going to test the new setup. Right, so to answer a few more questions, uh, one I get asked a lot about Wayne's ute. Are we going to do a modified on it? Yes, we are. It's nearly ready. In fact, I think it might be ready to do one during uh, this trip into Kimberley. Now, during the trip into Kimberley, There'll also be another 79, really decked out, the one towing the boat. Nathan, the guy from PM Canvas, he's will definitely get modified, uh, a modified video feature on it because that is a mint setup on the back of it. So cool. Also, Torben, am I going to do a revisited modified of his vehicle? Uh, yes, I am because he's changed so much in that vehicle. So give it a bit of time. Maybe we'll make his episode 50 sort of to go back and relive from episode one to 50. That'd be pretty cool actually, 50 episodes of Modified. Uh, currently, uh, I'm about four episodes ahead. So the next one, spoiler alert, it's going to be a 130 Defender, probably one of the most coolest 130 Defenders you will see. So that one coming up. Before we sign off, look how big Marley is now. A big bloody behemoth. Eight months old, still got eight months of growing, don't ya? She's nearly 40 kilos already, big dog. All right, well, thanks for watching, and um, I better go because I've got to go home. Still got some more packing to do, some more, you know, more T's to cross, some more I's to dot before I can head off, and uh, I'll see you in the next video, which will be the one after this one. Oh, all the usual, subscribe and Patreon and whatnot. Cheers, see ya.